Hey team, welcome back. Uh, early morning, well, it's, what are we, quarter to seven, but as I keep whinging about daylight savings. Uh, yeah, up early, well, I was up awake early, I wasn't going to do it this morning, but um, yeah, it just so happens we're awake, so i uh, going to walk these ewes and lambs out the back. So, what we do, we just put a sign up on the road, um, either end of, you know, where we're going to where we're going to walk the, the sheep, um, just to let oncoming traffic know what's going on, that, that's, um, that they're on the road, and then we've actually got a, oh, I don't know whether you call it a movement, per I think it is called a movement permit, um, that we pay each year, I think it's 25 bucks, and it's basically just, uh, it, I suppose, I don't know, it doesn't really legalise it, or what the, something we just have, it's part of our rates that we, our um, land rates that we pay, um, and it just basically sets out where the route, if we are going to be moving livestock on the road, um, yeah, where the route is, so, uh, anyway, we'll get these signs up, I, I generally go along and close all the gates and open what gates, um, because we're out on public roads, so we're closing gates into neighbours, um, neighbours front gates and that sort of stuff, and into paddocks that have been, um, that are open, so, uh, yeah, we generally do that first, and, um, yeah, the sheep pretty well know where they've got to go anyway, so it's, it's, um, it's pretty easy once we get them out on the road, so, but, uh, yeah, it's cool in the morning, it's only, it's telling me it's only 8 degrees outside, so I could probably have a jumper on, but, uh, yeah, we'll get organised and get them on the road. Just got back to home and uh, yeah, the planes turned up to um, do the insecticide on the both the corn and the rice. So I'll just uh, had a couple of sheep here that have sort of been running around the edge of the corn. So I've just been, just hunted them out of the way quickly so they don't get crop dusted because that's gonna be. Sheep and lambs moved out the other place. Uh, concentrate now on getting, yeah, getting this back up and going, um, feed-wise. So just come here. We've got a uh, fair bit of water in the pivot dam, and then the recycle dam off the corn's full too. So I'll, um, yeah, get this pivot going. Um, it didn't quite finish the half circle the other day when we had it running, so I'm gonna. Just walk it round here and then I'll just with 30 mil I think we're putting it on at and then I'll um I'll send it back round for probably to just to put eight or ten on just to get it back to the start and then I'll put another 30 um, all the way around. So um, things starting to dry out a bit now um, and we're looking at a week of sort of mid-30s again. Uh, so yeah, but just given we're only a month off lambing, um, yeah, we need to sort of try and try and bank a bit of feed. We've got agronomists coming out in the morning, our yeah, sort of winter cropping agronomists, just to go through the plan, and we'll make a bit a few decisions whether we whether we start and pre-water a bit of country, um, and then we can sow our start and sow our you know winter grazing varieties, both canola and wheat. So um, yeah, I'm always always a bit conscious of we've generally got feed to lamb down on, but it's then. If you get a cold winter or you get a dry, you know, dry autumn and all that sort of thing, we, we don't, we sort of haven't got feed up our sleeves. So I'm just trying to, um, just trying to bank a bit of feed now or get prepared to bank a bit of feed because um, you still will lamb for, what will we lamb for, five or six weeks roughly? Pro probably most of the lamb should be born in the first month, obviously. Oh, excuse me, um, rough. Uh, there'll obviously be a few later ones. Um, so yeah, but if you know if we sowed if we sowed canola or wheat for grazing, you know tomorrow, hypothetically, um, it's probably going to be eight weeks or better before we can uh, before we can graze it. So um, yeah, we're sort of aiming for realistically about a June grazing or something like that. So 
just uh, yeah, trying to. It's a bit of a juggling act this time of year, but um, look, we've got plenty of hay and grain and that to to supplementary feed, but it does create a lot of work. So anyway, we'll get. Hopefully, with this new diaphragm, if you watched the last one, we put a new diaphragm in the um, primer on the pump. Hopefully, um, it primes up all right and we don't have to get the fire unit to start it. It's fired up, fired up straight away, which is really good because it hasn't probably ever done that. So, yeah, finally getting that. Putting the butterfly valve in down the bottom, non-return valve down the bottom there has helped. Um, as you saw, the plane's been, it sprayed the army worm and then the aphids in the, in the corn. And, uh, yeah, you can still smell the insecticide. It's, yeah, quite, quite smelly. So. Anyway, we'll, uh, yeah, hopefully this all goes to plan, but it looks like it's going to. So windy again. Uh, if you watched the end of the last one, um, a bit of drone footage and uh, that, uh, this is what we've been using to um, yeah, run over our canola stubbles with. Um, so obviously it's in its packed up transport mode form at the moment. Um, but yeah, you can just see it's a row of discs there on a, on a rubber bush. Um, yeah, and it, it's got the cage roller at the back and and yeah, you just essentially it's got. Oh, you can sort of see them in there. Um, you just little stoppers that you adjust on the fold in on the ram, on the rams, and um, yeah, that adjusts the the, the um, working depth. If I can get it out, uh, yeah. So this is an eight meter machine. Um, so yeah, it belongs belongs actually belongs to my cousin. Isn't it? So we're just just dry hiring off it off him. Uh, yeah. So I'm just just about to run it back now. So. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's about an 80k round trip, um, but it's actually not too bad with the the vent with the um, I think they do 55k's at, at full noise on the road, so um, we won't tow it over there that quick. But we'll be uh, yeah full speed ahead coming home. So, um, but yeah, we'll probably we will probably grab it again in some uh, um, before cropping. We've got a bit more other country that we're going to work up that we'll probably get it to run over it. Um, but yeah, and then we've got got the grader board here um, we're actually in shares with that with uh, three other neighbors um, so it's it's 44 foot so it's about 12 about 13 meters I think in in metric so uh, what we what we lasered um, over here on our dairy block we're gonna just run over with that and then also uh, where Brendan filled in the drain and um, a bit of a channel, I want to run over that and just smooth it off a bit more too. So um, there is the recycle dam here is nearly dry, um, and if just depending on how we're going for time and if it stays dry, we may be able to get in there with the bucket and fill the other part of that in, and it'd just square that block up really well. So anyway, we'll just see how we're going for time. We've got a bit bit in front of us going forward. Up for tomorrow, uh, yeah. Even though its road speed's pretty good, it is. Uh, yeah, it's still a bit of a slog when you got to drive a tractor any distance. Uh -huh. Wind's got up, dust starting to move a bit, which is uh, yeah, it's turning into a bit of a bit of a crappy afternoon actually. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that'll do for this one. It's about knock-off time, so uh, yeah. 
we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ta-da.